So in the time of the Messenger of Allah, when he was alive, you would say, Allahu wa Rasuluhu a'lam. Amma ba'da wafatin Nabi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, fa'innahu yuqal, Allahu a'lam. But as for after the death of the Messenger of Allah, it is now said, Allah knows best. فَيُوكِلُوا الْعِلْمِ إِلَى اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى Because now you say that Allah knows best. You attribute it to Allah. لِيَنَّ اللَّهَ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى أَعْطَى رَسُولَهُ عِلْمًا عَظِيمًا Because indeed Allah is the one who gave His Messenger great knowledge. وَعَلَّمَكَ مَا لَمْ تَكُمْ مَا لَمْ تَكُنْ تَعْلَمْ وَكَانَ فَضْلُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكَ عَظِيمًا And indeed He taught you what you did not know and indeed the uh, 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 the blessings of Allah upon you were great. فَالرَّسُولُ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ عِنْدَهُ عِلْمٌ عَظِيمٌ مِنَ اللَّهِ So indeed the Messenger of Allah, he has great knowledge from Allah. وَيُجِيبُ فِي حَيَاتِهِ And in his life, you can say Allah and his Messenger know best. But after his death, صلى الله عليه وسلم, we say that indeed Allah knows best. So once Mu'adh ibn Jabal, he gives this answer. He's asked a question and he answers Allah and his messenger know best. The messenger of Allah provides the answer and he says, حَقُّ اللَّهِ عَلَى الْإِبَادِ أَنْ يَعْبُدُوهُ وَلَا يُشْرِكُ بِهِ شَيْئًا The right of Allah upon his slaves is that they should worship him and not associate any partners with him. This is the right of Allah upon his slaves. The first of them, and the last of them. As it comes, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I did not create jinn, nor men, except that they should worship me. This is the first right. It is the greatest of rights. Because from it, other rights branch out. And this is what we mentioned, right? And when we say, Al-Islam, the Messenger of Allah says, Antashhada an la ilaha illallah wa anna Muhammad al-Rasulullah. You bear witness, there is nothing worthy of worship except Allah, and that Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah. When you ask about Iman, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Antu'mina billahi wa malaikati. You believe in Allah and His Messenger, uh, 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 and His angels. So the affair begins with belief in Allah. The affair begins with the right of Allah. The affair begins with this affair here. The rights of Allah, a tawheed. And then everything else branches out from that. Everything else branches out from that. This is the first of rights. Then the right of the parents. Then the right of relatives. Then the right of the orphans and the poor and the neighbors and the slaves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He says Wa'budu Allah wa la tushriku bihi shay'a Worship Allah Do not associate any partners with Him. وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا And show goodness to your parents. وَبِذِي الْقُرْبَى وَالْيَتَامَى وَالْمَسَاكِينَ And to those that are closely related to the orphans and to the poor. وَالْجَارِ ذِي الْقُرْبَى وَالْجَارِ الْجُنُبِ وَالصَّاهِبِ بِالْجَنْبِ وَابْنِ السَّبِيلِ Your neighbor, the one that is close, and the one who is far, وَالْجَارِ الْجُنُبِ وَالصَّاهِبِ بِالْجَنْبِ And the one who is your companion on your side, yani, you're traveling together. وَابْنِ السَّبِيلِ And the traveler. وَمَا مَلَكَتْ أَيْمَانُكُمْ And those that have, that you own. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya ikhwan, has made rights. And the greatest of these rights is the right of Allah. The greatest of these rights is the right of Allah. 
Because from the right of Allah stems the right of everyone else. So when the kuffar, when they were speaking about, or even Ahlul Bid'ah, they speak in abundance about the rights of different parties, right? The rights of the husband, the rights of the wife, the rights of animals. Speak about all of these rights. And they're important. The rights of the parents, important. Bila shak alim. But they ignore the greatest of rights, and that is the right of Allah. That when fulfilled, it obligates you to fulfill the rights of others. If one is not fulfilling the rights of Allah, how is he going to fulfill the rights of a dog? Or of a cat? Does the dog and cat have rights upon us? Naam, bila shak. Bila shak, without a doubt. Right? We see in this, what does Shaykh Fawzan say? That the Messenger of Allah and Mu'ad ibn Jabal, they're riding upon the donkey, this shows the, the allowance of that, if the animal is capable of doing that. But the animals have rights upon us. Our children have rights upon us. Our children have, we have rights upon our children. But all of these rights, ikhwan, they come from the rights of Allah. So if the rights of Allah is not perfected and properly understood, someone's not giving the correct right to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he does not know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he does not understand the characteristics of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the asma wa sifat of Allah jalla wa ala, then what will obligate him to complete the rights of other than Allah? Mankind has been created weak. Right? Mankind has been created weak. It is the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that obligates us. The point, Ikhwan, is not that you should fulfill the rights of the cat or of the dog or of the whatever animal it may be or whatever person, but rather the affair is that you should do that because Allah has ordered you to do that. That's the affair. وَأَمَّا مَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ وَنَهَ النَّفْسَ عَلِ الْهَوَىٰ The one who fears Surah Nazi'at The one who fears standing in front of his Lord. And because he fears standing in front of his Lord, he prohibits himself from his desires. <coughs> so it's not that, I mean, it's not that you should just prohibit yourself from your desires. Because a kafir can do that. Right? A monk. A monk. They don't, I mean, they're not supposed to. And I'm sure there's some out there that don't commit zina. Right? But that's not the affair. The affair is you don't do it because Allah has told you not to do it. So it begins with the rights of Allah. Salman al-Farisi. That great Sahabi. Right? That great Sahabi. Every time I think of Salman al-Farisi, I think of a statement. مَنْ لَمْ يُسْرِعْ بِهِ عَمَلُهُ لَمْ يُسْرِعْ بِهِ نَسَبُهُ The one whose actions does not give him speed, his lineage will not give him speed. The one who is not pushed forward by his actions is not going to be pushed forward by his lineage. I mean, think about it. Salman al-Farsi The Persian Salman the Persian, right? From amongst the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum, The companions of the messenger Look at how his name is mentioned today 
Then look at Abu Lahab. Who is related, the uncle of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And look at, look at how he is mentioned today. Salman al-Farsi, 